In this JavaScript video lesson, you will learn how to program dynamic select form list elements. To demonstrate the logic, we will show how to change options of a select list based on the selection the user makes from the first list. A web application developer will definitely need to know how to do this when they get into form programming that involves data intake of categories and subcategories from a user. So dynamically populating list 2 according to the selection made from list 1 is probably the smartest way to go about that. Before we begin the lesson, let's go over what you will be learning. That way you guys can assess whether or not you want to watch the video because you might already know how to do all of these things. So the first thing is you'll work with an array and a corresponding loop which will slim down your code and produce a great deal of logic in just a few lines of code. You'll also learn how to delimit and split strings to further compartmentalize your data handling which slims down your code even more. And the last bit of logic that this lesson will cover is demonstrating how to dynamically render HTML option elements into a select drop-down list on the page within your smart little loop. Before we begin actual scripting, let's take a look at the finished product of the little application that you'll have after following this video lesson. So I made it a little choose your car application because I thought that would drive the logic home the best. Now what happens is in the first list you have three items. And you can have as many items that you want in there. But what's going to happen is when I choose one of these items, it's going to dynamically render an option list in this second select element here. So this first select element really powers what's going to be put into the second element. So let's go ahead and choose Chevy. And you'll see what I mean. Now if you open Choose Car Model, then you have Camaro, Corvette, or Impala that you can choose. If I change this to Dodge, I'll have a whole different list. You see? Now I can choose the Challenger, Charger, or Avenger. And the same with Ford. And like I said, you can have as many items as you need in this first list, which can then populate as many items as needed within the second list. Okay, that's the application. So you'll know what you'll be getting. You'll know what you'll be learning. So let's rock and roll. Now we're going to start with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. You can see we have our script element in place in the head tag and our body element has nothing in it yet. So that's where we're going to start in the body element constructing the HTML of the application. We'll type in choose your car. And we'll wrap that in an H2 heading. The next thing we'll do is an HR element which is a horizontal rule. Just puts a line going across the page. Now we'll type in choose car make. The next line down we'll open a select element and this will be the first drop down list. We'll go down a couple of lines and close that select element. Now let's give this an ID that's equal to SLCT1 short for select one. And let's also give it a name attribute of the same name and the name will be in your form processing for instance in PHP we'll scoop up this variable name the ID we're putting in place really just for the JavaScript referencing so we can talk to this element through JavaScript. This name attribute is going to be for your form processing. Now within the select element we're going to need some option elements and that's what's going to actually populate the list. So we open an option tag and we say value is going to be equal to nothing in this first one and then we can just close that option if you want to have a label for that option, you can put a default label there, but you want to leave the value empty just for that first one. Now you can copy that, control C, go down one line, control V, and in the value of this one, we're going to type Chevy. Just copy that and put it right there. So your label is Chevy, and the value is also Chevy. Now let's make two more of those. And this one was Dodge, and this one was Ford. And you can just copy that, paste it there, copy that, paste it there. Now let's just copy that select element. Let's go down one line. Let's put in another horizontal rule. And go down one more line and type in choose car model. And then on the next line, let's paste in that select element that we copied. Now we're going to change this to select two and this to select two. So this element will be communicated to within the JavaScript using this ID. And in your form processing, you can scoop up this name. Now in this one, you want no options. By default, you can just take this and put that select element just like that. There's nothing within it. It opens and closes with nothing in it. So to make this select element 1 populate the options within select element 2, we need an on change event. 
And there's several different events that you can listen for, but I'm just going to use the on change because I think it makes the most sense here. So anytime the user changes the value within that first list, we're going to populate the second list by firing off a JavaScript function called populate. Open, close parentheses, and we're going to feed it two arguments. The two arguments that we need to send it are the IDs for the select one and the ID for the select two. So let's go ahead and pass those through. For the first one, you can just say this.id. You can use the this reference because you are in that element. So it's going to send that ID select one. Or you can just type in select one within single quotes. Then you put a comma, and the next argument is going to be the ID of this element between single quotes. So like I said, if you wanted to, you could, it could read like this, select one, comma and then select two both of those within single quotes but all you want to do is pass the ID as an argument for this element that you're within you can say this dot ID with no single quotes so that passes this ID and this ID to the function called populate that we're going to write in the JavaScript element up here now in the HTML let's just put one more line so things look okay under that second select element and that's everything that we need within the HTML so the first line of the JavaScript we're going to create that function called populate. So you just type in function populate, open, close parentheses, open a curly bracket, and go down, close the curly bracket so you have your nice function nest all set up. Now remember this populate function is sending two parameters, the IDs of both of those elements. So, so let's scoop those up right here by typing in S1 comma S2. Now S1 and S2 are nice small little variables that will represent these two select elements on the page select one and select two so within your populate function these little variables represent those elements on the page okay now the first two lines within that function we're going to put the elements into an object that way we can more easily work with them and within our code we don't have to keep saying document get element by id so now we have var s1 and var s2 which are actual objects which represent these select elements here on the page. Here we're just sending the string that represents the ID of the of the select elements. All right, now let's talk to the S2 object first thing, and we're going to say s2.innerHTML is equal to nothing. So every time the function populate runs, the inner HTML of this select list is going to be made nothing again because a new list is about to be packed into it. So really, first thing in that function, you want to clear out whatever is in it already. Now, all we have to do is evaluate with a few if conditions, and then run a for loop over an array that's going to be assembled within those conditions. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's type in if, open close parentheses, open curly brace, go down a couple of lines, close the curly brace. And there's your if condition nest all set up and ready to go. Now, the first condition is going to be if the S1 list on the page dot value is equal to Chevy then we can populate the array correctly here just for Chevy so let's say var option array is equal to square bracket open and square bracket close and then semicolon now within the square brackets is where we're going to populate all the little list elements or really the values that are going to be used to populate the list all of the options within it now the first thing we want in there is a blank option and you can choose not to have a blank option at first, but I'm going to have a blank one. If you don't want the blank one first, just don't put this element in your array. So now let me put the next element into the array and it'll make a little more sense for you. I'm going to type in Camaro and then the pipe symbol and then again Camaro. But this time it's going to be uppercase. So for each value for each item within this option array, when we run the little loop, each one of these items are going to make an option element. You see how these option elements are down here? Each one has a value and a label. This is the value and this is the label that we're going to put in. So we're going to use this string as the value, this string as the label. So now let's put in Corvette. So comma, double quote, double quote. In between double quotes you put the pipe. On the left side of the pipe you put the value, what's going to be sent through the form processing, and then you put the label. What the user is going to see to select within that list. And then the last one is comma, double quote, double quote, Impala. So you type in Impala lowercase, the pipe symbol, 
and then Impala uppercase. And you can put as many as those as you need in there separated by comma. Now before we put the condition in for forward and dodge, I want to show you the for loop and show you how all the logic is going to work and then we can put in the other two conditions that will represent forward and dodge. So let's open up a for loop, open close parentheses, open a curly brace, go down a couple of lines and close your curly brace. And that gives you your for loop nest right there. Now the for loop, we have to create a variable of option. And this can really be named anything you want. So the variable is option in the option array. So really what that means, for all of the options, within the options array this loop is going to run once for each one of those options so for instance this one has four items within the option array that means this loop is going to run four times and each time it runs as it passes through you can access each one of these items here each one of these four items you can access them within this array as they pass through it using this option variable so knowing that we can pop in the five lines that are going to make the magic happen and let me explain those to you now. The first line is we create a variable called pair and that represents the option array whichever option is coming through the loop dot split. So we run the split method and we use the pipe as a delimiter. So what that does it gives you another little array with two items in it. So for instance if Camaro is passing through the loop what's going to happen is this variable called pair is going to be a little array that has two items in it, this and this, because we split it by the pipe. We split that string by the pipe. This way we can use this as the value of the option, and then we can use this as the label what the user sees. Because there's many times where you don't, uh, the label and the value can't be exactly the same string. So that's how you set it up like that. You can use the pipe to put both in as you need them. Then as each one passes through the loop, you can use pair 0 and then pair 1 to access this one and this one. So for instance pair 0 when you reference the array in this sort of way pair 0 gives you the first item. Pair 1 gives you the second item. So that's how that works and that's why we're setting up a variable called pair which actually splits the string. Okay now the next line here is var new option and this represents document.createElement method. And the element that we want to create using the createElement method is an option element. You can create new divs. You can create new paragraphs. If I was to just put P there, that would create a new paragraph. Or if I put div, that would create a new div. But we want new option elements placed into this little select2 down here in the HTML. So we're going to create new options, one for each element within the array as it passes through. And we can reference that new option object and its value property and make it equal to the first side of the pair, basically the lowercase word on each one of these items as they pass through. Now the inner HTML, which represents this label for each option element, is populated with this part of the string, the uppercase. And then finally, we reference the S2 element, which is this little select2 element down on the page. And we say dot options dot add new option. So you see the new option is created here. It's given its value and it's given its label. And then we actually pop it right into the S2 element, the select element down here called select2. Now what's going to happen when we run this right now, you can run this in the browser right now and test. Just press Control S to save it, and then run it in your favorite browser. All right, now what's going to happen is if I choose Dodge and Ford, nothing will happen because there's no condition set for those yet. But if I choose Chevy, you see, I get Chevy's list. Now let me choose Dodge. Nothing happens because we haven't put that condition in yet. And let me show you how easy that is. Now you see where we have in our script if S1 dot value is equal to Chevy, var option array equals this particular array. We're just going to copy that if condition and then type in else right here and then paste in that if condition that we just copied else if s1.value equals dodge and then do it one more time else space paste the last condition is else if s1.value is equal to forward now all you have to do is simply change up these arrays to have different cars in them 
for Dodge right here. So let's change this to Avenger. And then you would have Avenger right here in capital. And then these two are Challenger and Charger. Now let's simply change the option array to reflect Ford cars here. So there's your Fords all in place. Now if you run this you'll have your little application all ready to go. Let me choose Dodge. I get all the Dodge uh, cars. Avenger, Challenger, and Charger. If I choose Chevy, the list changes to give me all the Chevy cars. And then if I choose Ford, there's the two Ford models that are in place. So you see how that works? Okay, so there you go. There's an in-depth explanation of how to use one select element to populate another on the page dynamically. And this listener is key. This on change because that is this actual moment when I choose dodge. On change, bam, our function fired off called populate. Okay, so we hope you enjoyed this lesson using JavaScript and HTML on how to program dynamic select form elements and changing the lists.